Hey guys, this is Matt Beck from freesaloneducation.com here with American Salon, hooked us up with this cool booth and hooked us up with cool people. I got Lauren and Roderick. We got a ton of information from these guys that we're about to give you. So I hope you guys enjoy this podcast. So where I want to start is with your story because you guys have one of the most unique stories of this entire day of every interview that I've done. You guys are doing something completely different than anyone else. So that's interesting. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about your backgrounds real quick. I know okay. let's start with you, Lauren, and okay. then we'll, we'll go forward. So uh, I've been in the industry for about 18 years. Um, I did an apprenticeship at a salon, so I didn't go to school. I learned everything hands-on in the salon, uh, which was a really interesting way to learn. I it, it made me grow up in the industry being self-taught. So right. You know, while I've taken advanced classes and I think they're really important for foundational work, I've been able to fill in the gaps by just trial and error. And I think as artists and as creative people, we should embrace that a little bit more and, yeah. and, and work really hard at making ourselves better instead of relying on other people to make us better. Yeah. Um, so take what you learn from the extra education and the additional training and take it back and make it yours. Um, How long ago was that? That you, was 18 that. years. 18 years. 18 years okay. I started. Yeah, okay. 18 years ago. So 18 years ago, you started out as an apprentice. Uh, so you were self-taught. Kind of, did you find your path? Because I know that you're really into styling and editorial yeah. and all that. Did, did that was that right away? It wasn't. It wasn't. Um, I, I always thought outside the box when I started doing hair. They threw me into color, and I specialized in color. Okay. Um, I did that for about five years. I mastered that. And I, I'm going to use quotations, you know, because do right. we ever really master anything? Right. Yeah. But, you know, I felt like I had a really good grasp on it. And then I wanted to move on. And so because I couldn't cut, it made me really uncomfortable to call myself a professional, only being able to do one thing and mastering one thing. So I found that over my 18 years, I tend to dive in and submerge myself into one area and once I feel confident and comfortable, I move on. You move on, yeah. So I did color, and then I did cutting, and then I went into more event styling and, and classic hairdressing. And that's when I really started to take a lot of classes because it interested me. You know, hair does what you tell it to do. So it's a matter of speaking the language that hair speaks yeah. and being able to talk to it. Um, so through all of those classes, I really realized that my true love is being behind the camera and styling for photo shoots. And I started doing just fun photo shoots with locals in my area, photographers, models, just to have my work on record and be right. able to watch my growth. Because I think as hairdressers, it's easy to forget how far we've come. Yeah. And by getting all of this documented, I was able to look back and say, wow, seven years ago, this is what I thought was amazing and yeah. how far I've come. Mm -hmm. um, Do you find that that classic work that you kind of started with, because obviously, the editorial work that you do now, do you find traces of that classical work? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's the foundation. Right. So without having a foundational understanding of how to do hair, then you sort of can't break the rules, right? You have to learn all the rules to break them. Right. Is sort of the way that I've approached it. Um, and being a more creative person, really strict boundaries, I'm the one that goes, okay, that's cool, but now what? <laughs> right. You know, which yeah. ones can I break? And I always ask a lot of questions of why and how so that I know which rules you can break and which ones you can't because there are certain areas in hair that it's easy to break the rules and it makes sense to break the rules but you have to know the rules first right to know how far to push it so yeah it's always been a passion of mine and just being able to create amazing images that are a little different but still understood right um has been it's it's been a great journey that's awesome it's been a great journey so tell me how the journey kind of shifted and then now you tell me about this partnership that happened so that's really funny so probably about do you six consider years? this a partnership <laughs> is, this, is this what this is we're, we're business partners it's official we're a little more than that we we have been dating now four years that's awesome um i contacted roderick six years ago because as I told you before, I can't call myself a professional if I don't understand things, right. right? So there's areas of the hair world that I just didn't understand. Clipper cutting was one of them. So I felt like, how do you call yourself a professional when a client comes in and you say, I'm sorry, I can't do that. Right. Right? It's ridiculous. Yeah. So I contacted him about doing a clipper class for the first salon that I owned, and I owned it with partners. Um, we hit a rough patch. Some things happened that we weren't able to afford to bring him up. And it's expensive. It's expensive. He's expensive. 
<laughs> you can tell. He's still I mean, expensive. He looks, don't yeah. don't let he the suit and tie expensive. fool you. It's it's <laughs> it's affordable education for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so so I sort of put it off and. Two years later, I sold my salon and I was um, doing some different things. I was working with a different company throwing hair events. Okay. So I sort of stepped back from the ownership role and was doing my clients behind the chair, but also getting involved in other areas of the industry. I'm not one to sit still. So I can't just stand behind the chair. It doesn't work for me. I have to do 8 million other things while I'm doing that. So right. I, um, I wanted to take clipper cutting and I contacted him to come down to South Carolina where he was because I figured it'd be cheaper. I just went myself and figured it out. And so he, I said, I don't have the money like right today, but if you can give me a schedule, then I can plan for it. How did you know about him? He was on my Facebook constantly posting barbers, barbers, barbers. And I thought, well, who else to ask than the guy that's really into it, right? Yeah, exactly. So I said, I don't have the money right this minute, but what can we work out? You know, give me a schedule. I'll plan for it. I'm I'm amazing at financial planning. So, I mean, I can plan for this. And he said, well, you can come down and I won't charge you for the class. You can take me to dinner. Sounds Good like move. a proposition, yeah. a little bit proposition. I was trying to help a starving artist <laughs> get to the next level in their career. So it gets better. So I said, okay, I have nothing to lose. I'm going to go take this. Hold on, free- wait a minute. Just to let the audience know that there are two stories that goes along with this whole, uh, with, with our relationship. So I'm going to let her tell the first one. <laughs> So I said, okay, I'll come. Where should I stay? So he sends me a link to a hotel that looked like nothing I would ever feel comfortable staying in. Okay. It was probably rented by the hour. So I explained to him that I don't stay in such places. What's my other option? And he said, you can stay at my house. Oh. So Another now I'm good thinking, move. Now Again, I'm- <laughs> trying to help the starving artist to get to the next level in their you career. You can stay in this really disgusting place right. or, or my house. So I'm thinking he's that. a killer. And I think, well, you know. Let's Google this guy, right, and see really what's going on. He had over 50 pages of Google results. I thought, he's got way more to lose than I do. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and chop me up in a million pieces. Somebody's looking for you. So I, I was just at a business seminar last night w- with my wife, actually, and the guy was talking about how, like, 20 years from now, the world is going to be so much safer because there will be no privacy. Right. Like, right. Everyone will be Googleable. Right. So right. you can't do anything wrong right. because people will know. I mean, right. go ahead and chop me up. You <laughs> got 50. You're all over the web. Somebody's looking. Exactly. <laughs> all right. So. So. Um, so I, you know, I agreed. And then I thought, well, I'm staying at this guy's house. I got to get to know him. So I start trying to like start conversation. He's very cold. He wants nothing to do with me. It's the weirdest scenario. I'm like, I'm staying at his house. He's not flirting with me. There was nothing flirtatious. Hence the killer thought, right? Like right. he only is luring me in. Um, and about three weeks later, after we started talking more and more and more, he flew up to Detroit and the rest is history. I never okay. even took the class. So you lived in Detroit. I did. And you lived in South Carolina. Yes, I'm right? from South Carolina. Okay. Um, I, uh, and I'm Roderick Samuels. I moved uh, from South Carolina to Detroit about a year and a half ago um, to start on this amazing adventure with Lauren, um, <laughs> both, <My word>. in, <laughs> in, both in love and in labor. Um, we did meet, uh, and, and it, I guess it's kind of funny because it wasn't like on Tinder right. or, you know, match.com. We met on, on Facebook, Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is and, worse, um, but it was all business. Yeah. Yeah. You know? and yeah. It's cool that you guys share that passion for what you're doing. You know what? And I always joke, like if, if, uh, you know, nothing's ever going to happen to us because it can't, we can't date normal people now. Right? right. Like we have this understanding that we're in the same industry and we, we balance each other in ways that. I don't think either of us have ever experienced yeah, and you're before. traveling together and you're creating something and that's what's cool about right. this industry like you have you've now opened up the door to be able to work together and create. Absolutely. so tell me about uh, you guys have launched this education program right. uh, so tell me about your education that you're doing now so uh, hair lab Detroit mm-hmm. is an independent education company uh, Lawrence um, background is in editorial styling, of course, with, you, uh, with her 2013 Naha nomination and her 2015 win in texture. Um, I'm, I, I'm actually been, been in the school business for 15 years. Um, I'm, at, I'm in my second school right now, okay. uh, Michigan Barber School. And, uh, but our main focus is our salon and basically, for the most part, our uh, Hair Lab Detroit, the academy, okay. where we kind of balance each other in that way, too. Uh, I'm a barber, been a barber, barber stylist for 20 years let me make sure i get that right yeah because i, I get called right. a liar um or have liabilities um <laughs> while i'm on 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 uh on the air but uh but doing it 20 years and loving every That's moment great. of it 
So tell me, um, so as a barber, uh, because I have been getting feedback, actually a couple of people that we interviewed today launched uh, men's cutting programs. Mm -hmm. There's a big boost in no, men's nobody cutting. Nobody contacted me first? I know, right? <laughs> nobody uh, asked. <laughs> men's, men's cutting programs are becoming very popular or became very popular a year ago in, yes. this in, in, in the hair you know, salon business. Uh, so what's your take on that since you've been doing it for 20 years? Uh, what's your thoughts on the current situation with barbering right now? Uh, the current situation with barbering right now is amazing. Um, again, you know, you see a lot of stylists that are out there. Uh, and no hate, no offense to any other cosmetologists out there working those clippers as well. But you see a lot of people wanting to, um, to, to get more barber education. They yeah. want to see a lot more people uh, that want to create those classic fades and tapers. And right now it's booming. Um, you know, I think it was, a matter of fact, I, don't, I can't remember exactly what the article was. But it's supposed to rise again, like two point one million dollars in the next like year or so. So yeah, it's really crazy. Yeah, it's really crazy, really crazy. But you know, being a barber, like a down, like a real true barber, I love the movement. I love to see that you know, at one point it was a front for a lot of people, you know, to to do bad things, and now it's at the forefront of the industry and continuing to make waves. That's awesome. Yeah, man. So and it tell seems me to be more creative. Can I add to that? Yeah, you know, yeah, it's yes. more creative than it has been. Yeah. In the past, because now it's in the forefront, you know, and right. I think that that's sort of where we fill a hole. Sure. Right. Because we have the balance of coming from a, a school system. He's great at breaking it down to basics because that's what he's used to. He's used to teaching people that don't know how to hold a comb. Right. So mm -hmm. coming and teaching these cosmetologists barbering, you have to start at the ground floor. And th I think that's where sort of the miss is, is yeah. that, you know, they're they're not teaching to barbers. They're teaching to cosmetologists. Right. So right. because we have no experience, a lot of us that either went through school or did apprenticeships learned shear over comb because that's what was in, you know, right. in the mm -hmm. 90s and then early 2000s. And now that clippers are in, you have to start from the ground up. So that's what he does. That's what he's used to. Very cool. And, you know, we balance each other in that because he's very structured in his educating. Mm -hmm. And I'm sort of the more creative you know, there's a million different ways to do something, and let's just do it. You know, it yeah. feels right. Yeah, be, right. be careful when she starts to move her hands like this because <laughs> she starts feeling shapes and textures in the air that aren't there. Yeah. So uh, just just be careful. But because that. we teach together, we're able to reach all the learning types, right? right. So yes. and and for us, that's great. I mean, that's an amazing feeling to do know. Do you guys team up on each subject, or do you do you do your thing and you do your thing? So both. Yeah, both. So um, contingent or depending on what the show is, you know, um, a lot of shows really find a lot of interest in us because, you know, we can teach together both uh, the barbering and editorial styling aspect. But we're also amazing apart, you know. So if you want to learn the latest and greatest and techniques to uh, to help you create your next um, your, your next uh collection or, or, or photograph competition work, you know, you want to see Lauren, if you really want to get down into men's grooming, how to properly hold a clipper, why, uh, how to build a male clientele, you come to me. And then both of us, even from a business standpoint, we have a lot of salons that are con, you know, that are, that are wanting to hire us because they're dealing with millennials. They're dealing with a yeah. new group of people. And for me, it's like, okay, from the undergrad perspective, it's like, okay, this is what should be taught in schools. However, I'm going to bridge that gap. Now let's talk about from a salon ownership standpoint, she's going to hit you with all the real facts of, of what, you know, um, what salon owners are looking for when it comes to hire. So um, from whether it be from the business aspect of the personal appearance industry or from a technical standpoint, we actually reach every single yeah, you person guys hit in the industry. Absolutely. Yeah. Very absolutely. When we teach together, a lot of what we get booked for is like a men's and women's clipper cutting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he'll teach the men's end of it, which is like the barbering end of it. And then I teach how to use clippers to cut women's hair to make more money, right? So you can do a, a much faster women's haircut using clippers. And in our industry, time is money. Right. So if you can tear through a haircut and have it be very efficient and very accurate in 10 minutes versus 20 minutes, you've just doubled your money. Right. Absolutely. So exactly. that's where we kind of combine forces. Well, I think, I think a lot of times stylists don't realize that clippers are no more than mechanical shears. Right. You know, where you have two blades on a shear, you have... 26 teeth cutting at 2,500 strokes per minute on your mechanical shears. So right. I think that, you know, just bringing that type of focus to the education, bringing that type of, um, you know, being able to bridge that gap between barber to stylist, terminology, mechanical shears versus traditional. I think that we're, we're really, really doing um, some amazing things, as, you know, for education for our industry. Awesome. So tell me what is, what's coming up with you guys? Where, where are you headed next? 
Ooh, we, we have a lot of changes going on right now. Um, we've been traveling all over the country mm. more and more and more. And, you know, with each year, it's like more weekends that we're gone. And um, we had a full staff at the salon. We're sort of scaling back and going into our own private studio, working by appointment only so mm. that we can keep our clients happy, but still keep the industry happy, too. So we're right. now sort of had to make some really hard decisions. You know, do we want to grow the salon into this giant salon to take over Detroit or do we want to keep sharing what we what we're doing with the industry because the salon being new it's hard to grow something from the ground up while you're on while you're away you can't yeah it's hard so you know and we are firm believers that you know when you divide all of your energy into too many different places you succeed at none of them right so we've scaled back that we're we're moving into a different space um so we'll still run education out of out of our smaller space, but we'll incorporate a photography studio inside our space. Okay. So that's kind of what we're missing too, is turning out more editorial work on a regular basis because we're so busy traveling, running a salon, dealing with staff, doing all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've scaled back the salon. It'll just be the two of us. Um, we'll scale back the number of days that we're there, you know, maintain our client base, but then have more time for the industry. So right. Very cool. We're available for hire to travel and come to your salon or you can come to us. Um, We haven't set a set schedule in Detroit because it's a little easier to be fluid with it. Right. And see where we're needed the most and kind of go from there. Yeah, we're pretty good with doing pop-up classes, um, you know, uh, whether it be, you know, a couple weeks in advance, whatever the case may be. We do a lot of jam sessions um, throughout throughout our space and just hosting a lot of cool events. Uh, I know that right now we are uh, definitely... Doing the IBS Las Vegas show. Okay. Uh, we are looking forward to the Naha announcements on May 18th. Okay. I hope that I get a nomination this year. <laughs> that was and, very and, threatening and, and, to all and, the judges. And, 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 and definitely a win. Um, but you know, for the for the people out there, I just want to let you know, you know, being a down home barber um, and entering into the men's hairstyling competition. Still hadn't gotten a nomination yet, still hadn't won, but I'm still continuing to, to fight. And for a lot of the barbers out there, you know, I think this is something that will be amazing. Um, it's really good exposure, but it's also good practice yeah. in, in really working on your craft. Very um, cool. It's a lot of stylists that enter. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm really proud of him for putting himself out there in a world that has traditionally been stylists. Yeah. You know, the barbers have sort of, like, bowed out and not really gotten involved, and so... You know, if nothing else, at least he's sending a message to step outside your box. And I think for Naha, that's step what Step outside about. your box. <laughs> you know, and not yeah, making exactly. it is okay. You know, yeah. I made it the first year that I ever entered, which was mind-blowing, right? Because you go into it like, we'll see what happens. Right. But to make it to the finalist round mm-hmm. the first year and then not make it at all the second year. You know, the second year I entered, it was like I was missing. So, right. you know, that was an ego, a punch to the ego a little bit, but it doesn't make you quit. So what do you think is like, so now that you've done it, you know, a few times uh, and you're entering as well, like, what is your focus when you're entering? Like, why, why do you think the first year you, you got the nomination, second year, nothing? So the first year I entered Texture, Texture has always been a love for me. It's one of those wild, wild cards that, you know, you have to kind of. Which yeah. was a huge challenge for me because to me, I look at that category and think it's so boring, right? right? Because there's nothing to feel. There's nothing, you know. Right. So to make that interesting, and, and it's funny because 
we'll see what happens. But my contemporary classic collection, I like a lot more than I like my texture collection. So yeah. okay. that's crazy. It's been interesting. And he's done a lot this year, too. Yeah. So normally I enter, I've been entering men's, the men's, you know, uh, hairstylist of the year category every year for the last three years. <laughs> Still hadn't given up yet. But, you know, for me, it's more so like, you know what, since... I'm, I'm, uh, since I'm a barber, I have a barber's license. For me, this is something big just for the barbers. You yeah, know? yeah. Get the nomination, getting the win. You know, that will help to really, for me, solidify where barbers are in our country and the importance of being a barber, not just from, you know, from a styling aspect, but just really, really giving the barber something to look forward to, too. You Very know? cool. And right now, texture and men's grooming are really, really hot. Yeah, so I think you guys are in the perfect place. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, good we, luck. With Thank you. All of that, you. I can't Thank wait to see, the, see what happens. Absolutely. Um, also, congratulations on your cover. Thank you. American uh, Slime, this isn't it. This isn't it. It will be out in uh, June, right? June, yep. I just so. found out last night. It's a, it's a huge, huge success for yeah. a lot. I was working for Weedad, um, and we actually have, it will be um, an afro on the cover, which That's I mean, awesome. hasn't happened before. So That's great. It's a really big deal. We're excited. So how can people follow you guys, find your education, all that stuff? Um, you can go to. Me, I, he runs all of our social media. I'm like, I don't know how do they find us. What yeah, do do? yeah, yeah. She don't even know passcodes right now. <laughs> no, um, I gave him all the passwords to all my social media so he can help me. Nice. Help me help myself. So you can check us out at Hair Lab Detroit on Twitter, at Hair Lab Detroit on Instagram, at Hair Lab Detroit on Facebook, at Hair Lab Detroit on Google Plus. Um, see, see, I didn't know we had all those. You, you can do. go. You can go to uh, www.hairlabdetroit.com. And you can also get some of our education. You can get a subscription or individual educational classes for 99 cents at uh, hairlabdetroittheacademy.com. Good job. Yep, Thanks. and uh, you can find Lauren Mosier on Instagram. Lauren M. Mosier on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Lauren Mosier at, on Facebook. Ro and I don't know my other stuff. At Roderick Samuels on Instagram. At Roderick Samuels on Facebook, <laughs> at Roderick Samuels oh on Twitter, <laughs> at Roderick Samuels on Google+. Thad went to the same school you did. It, it, it works because the more you it repeat does. it, I mean, you can't forget it. Right. I, I got shameless plugs for days. That's awesome. Thank you guys so <laughs> Thank much. You. Thank you. Good luck with everything. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you to American Salon Magazine for letting us sit here and talk to cool people. Um, that's pretty much it. We'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you.